and welcome back to another Java Made Simple tutorial video. In the previous video we talked about variables. We also talked about types and different types in Java that we have. We mainly focused on strings and integers and we just briefly mentioned some of the others. In this video I would like to go back to one of the mentioned types and explain it a bit more and show how it can be used. That type is a boolean. A boolean can hold two values, at least a primitive boolean. Primitive boolean can hold two values and that's true or false. We declare it the same way as we do strings or integers and it, the process that we do it is exactly the same. So let's just give a look and um, see how it's done. So let's declare a boolean. Um, we start with the type and we give it a name and we say it equals true and we end with the semicolon that's a boolean another value that the boolean can have is false and that's another boolean and of course um, we also have a boolean with an uppercase which can be null so that's the difference um, between the primitive one but just ignore it for now so we're just going to stick with the primitive one if you take a look at it it looks really simple and it doesn't really make sense like why would you even need this but combining booleans with conditions offers you an extremely new power if you want to say so in uh, any programming language so let's take a look at what conditions are conditions are think of them as a barrier in your code that you say if something passes this barrier or if something should pass this barrier execute the, some other part of the code so let's take a look at how it looks like it's the easiest way to to describe this for me is to just show it how you look like you start with the condition with an if so you say if and then in brackets that's where your condition it goes and you have this curly brackets where your code goes so for example we are going to just use something that we already used before system.out.println hello uh, am inside of if so we want to make some condition that will say when do we want to print this if we use x here and run our program what do you think will happen yeah we'll print this okay if i use epsilon here and run a program nothing happens so this is not printed because epsilon is false that's how the condition work they say if true whatever here is then execute this code otherwise yeah don't execute it also the conditions have can have um, think of it as a fallback mm, part of it so it's called else and you do it like this and you can say again you just put a part of the code here so we have this if block and we have the else block now if i run my program with epsilon here you can see that it prints this because epsilon is false so we don't execute this part here rather we go to this one and if we put x here i guess you can guess already what will happen we'll print this part here but not this one so that's really nice but it doesn't really seem that useful now one thing that you can take a look at is how we can define booleans a bit differently for example let's say we still have our boolean x here but we don't want to give it the value directly but we rather want to make java decide on its own if something is true or false for example let's say we want to compare two numbers we want to say if 5 equals 3 we already know that this is false and it's clear to us but to java it needs to do some calculations also you see that look, this looks a bit weird we do not check the equal sign uh, with uh, just one of the um, with one of these uh, I guess however they are called uh, my English not so good today uh, yes equal sign or whatever but we use two of them 
So we use two of these always if we want to check if something is equal. So if we want to say five equals to three, we use two of these. And if we run our program now, you can see that the else block is printed. That's because five is not equal to three. So this side here, this right side is false, which means that the X will also be false. And if we write five here, so five is equal to five and we run our program again, we can see that this part is printed, which means that the X is true. Perfect. Um, one other thing that you can also say is not equal. So you can replace this one here with exclamation mark. And what this does is it says, so you would read this part here as is five not equal to five. And if you run this, you see that the else block is printed because five is equal to five and you're checking if that is not equal. So this will be false because five is equal to, four, to five. If you replace the five with some different number, like whatever, and you are saying now is five not equal to 87, which is true. So X would be true and our if block would be printed as you can see. So those are some things that you can do. Also, you can define booleans with saying if some number, for example, three is less than five. You can already guess that this is true. And if you run, we run our program again, you can see that the if block is printed. Perfect. You can also uh, turn this sign around and you will say if three is greater than five. And if we run our program again, we should print this one because three is not greater than five. So this is false. You can also say maybe if it's greater or equal to five. So you can do something like that. For example, if we would put five here uh, with just greater and ran this program, we would print uh, the else block because five is not greater than five. But if you say is five greater or equal to five, then it would go to the if block. You can, of course, instead of just using X here, you can just put this part that we have here also. Now let's take a look at how do we do this with strings. For example, let's declare two strings first. String A equals, let's say A, and string B equals B. So let's say if A equals B. And if we run our program, you can see that it's in the else block. So because we have A as the value A and B has the value B. And if we change the B to value A and run our program again, this should be true. And we should end up in the if block. Yeah, so that's, that's what we have here. And you can already guess how we can handle this. Let's now add uh, another block here. It's called else if. And basically it does that you are allowed to link couple of blocks. So you can link basically as many as of them as you want. So with this condition block, so you start with uh, if and condition, then you can say else if condition, else if condition, you can, you can add as many of them as you want. So here that would not be an issue. We are just going to add one, but you always can end with else, but you do not have to. So if the last one is not true, it would just not do anything. For example, if you um, have an X that's uh, false and you say here if X and here if X, this will be false, so you will not get here. And this would be false and you would not get here. You would go to else. But if you didn't have else, you would just not do anything. 
So it's simple as that. Let's now, instead of this boolean x, let's use a number. So we're gonna say int x equals 10. So we can say here, for example, if x is greater than 50, we can print here something like 50. If x is greater than 10, we can print here greater than 10. And let's add another block. Oops. Let's add another block. If x is greater than 5, then we can say greater than 5. Can you guess which of these blocks will be printed? Let's run our program and let's see what gets printed. It prints greater than 5 because we have x of value 10 and we, we are checking here. Is 10 greater than 50? No. Okay, I don't do anything here. I go to the next one. Is x, which is 10, greater than 10? No, it's not. It's equal to 10. So we go to this block. And then you have, uh, actually, sorry, we don't go here. We jump over this because x is not greater than 10. So 10 is not greater than 10. So we go to the next else if block, which says, is 10 greater than 5? And that's true. And it just executes this one. But it does not execute this one because as soon as you enter one of the blocks, the rest are ignored. What if before this block here, we had something is x greater or equal to 10? Can you guess which block would be executed now? Because now we have here 10 is equal to 10, but 10 is also greater than 5. Which block would be executed? You probably guessed it. It would be this one because it always executes the first one that is true. As soon as it finds something is true, it executes it and that's it. We are done. So no, it doesn't look at any of these, doesn't evaluate them. It just goes to the first one. Hopefully this makes booleans a bit clearer. Uh, booleans are really important to you, so you will be using them all over the place and you will be using uh, conditions all over the place. Let's just repeat how we can define booleans. So just a few examples. Boolean x1 equals, so we have 5 equal 5. So this is a boolean. We have 5 not equal 5. This is a boolean. We have five greater or equal five. So this is also a Boolean. And for example, we have with strings. So string la equals string x epsilon. So this is also a Boolean and this is for, I do not know how to count. So hopefully this makes it clear. And um, yeah, as always, just um, go to the video and if something is not clear, please do write me, just leave me a message on the video or um, yeah, send me an email. You should be able to find my email on, um, on my YouTube channel, so it should not be a problem. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe for more future videos so you can easily find them and like a video if you like it. If you don't like it, then dislike it. So I will know on where I need to improve and what's wrong. Yeah, if you find something wrong with my videos, please do let me know. I'm trying, trying it out. I didn't do tutorials before, so this is the first time I'm trying them. So I just want to see how it goes. So do let me know if something is, yeah, wrong, basically with them. Okay, so that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.